and welcome back or welcome to Sidekick COO. I'm Sandra B, your Sidekick COO, and today we are gonna be answering the question, what key performance indicators should I be tracking in my business? All right, so first of all, the key performance indicators that you're gonna track in your business are going to be dependent on your business and what you're going to be doing in your business and what projects you have for your business and all sorts of other things. But typically a couple of things are going to be true for most businesses. Well, one, you're going to want to watch your cash flow. You're going to want to watch what's coming in and going out of your business, knowing at the end of every week what you're expected to have in the bank. Knowing what your cash flow is and whether you're running cash flow negative or positive from week to week is going to help you manage your money much better than if you didn't have your eyes on that number. So that is one. Uh, second, your revenue, specifically your profit margin, actually. So a lot of people only look at their revenue, but what you really should be looking at is what your business is bringing in at the end of the day, at the end of the year, what is your profit margin? Understanding uh, what your profit margin in is um, as a whole, but also on any specific offers that you might have. It's really good to understand if you have three different offers, which one has the most and which one has the least profit and how do those things tie in together? It's fine to have something that has uh, little to no profit or might even cost you money. It could be a lost leader uh, that drives other revenue into your business. That's totally fine. As long as you know about it, there's no sense of running ads to an offer that you think is making you money when in fact it's costing you money. You need to know your numbers around that. that. So always knowing what your profit margin is on any of your offers, as well as your business as a whole, I'd say that's pretty standard for most businesses to understand and keep an eye on. Other than that, the key performance indicator that you're going to really want to watch is whatever your main number is. So when I talk about like your main number, it's that's the number that kind of like drives everything in your business. What is it that leads to revenue? Like what is it that when this number is affected, it affects everything in your business. So uh, for most people, that's going to be something like the number of leads that they get. It could be the, you know, your email list size or the number of discovery calls that people are booking, the number of sales calls that are being booked, the number of leads that are just coming into a pipeline. Whatever that main number is, it usually starts with sales. If that number goes up or down, you know that your revenue is going up and down or your profit margin is going up and down or whatnot. It affects a lot of things in your business. For instance, if you're tracking sales calls, maybe you have a sales team and you're getting a heck of a lot more sales than you usually get. Maybe you have to hire more sales staff or if you get less less sales uh, calls booked, you have to have less sales staff. So not only is that affecting revenue, your top line, it's also affecting your expenses because as that grows, you have to bring in more people to accommodate more sales potentially. So that's what I talk about uh, when I, what I'm thinking about, sorry, when I talk about your main number, your critical number, that one factor in your business that's kind of driving everything. Those are really the key things, your cash flow your profit margin, your main number, your key number, your critical number. In regards to key performance indicators for everything else, again, it's going to depend on what you are doing in your business. So going back to the idea of sales calls. So if you have sales calls in your business and maybe you're doing them on yourself. So say you don't even have a sales team right now, you're handling all your sales calls yourself, knowing one, how many calls are being booked two, how many of those calls actually convert into a sale and three, maybe the value of each of those sales. And then you can figure out from there. So if I booked 10 sales and in the end, um, three booked and I made a thousand dollars, then I know that for every lead coming in, I'm making a hundred bucks or whatnot. And then I know that my conversion rate is 30%. So that's just an example and using really small numbers so that I could try and do the math in the head, my head. And hopefully I did the math properly. Uh, same with like any projects that you have. A lot of people in uh, the online space tend to put together courses or memberships or pro programs, things like that. So when you're putting that together, just in regards to like, say, building the program, you might actually be looking at as a key performance indicator of that 
project amount of time it's taking to do compared to the budgeted, like the estimated time. So I like to use a project management tool that lets me estimate my time and then also lets me track my time against all of my tasks so that I always know one, am I estimating my tasks properly uh, in regards to time? Two, how long is it taking to do all of these things? Three, how close to completion am I on anything? Um, and four, and the big one, is how much did that project actually cost me to do? So if I am building a course, I can track my time, I can track my team's time, um, and understand exactly how much that cost me, because how much of their time went into it and how much I paid them equals the cost that that of building that project on top of any other extra expenses for uh, creating it. So it just helps me get get a really accurate understanding of the cost of that project and then what so that I can calculate my break even point. Every time you're creating a new project or you're doing anything new in your business or even just your existing work in your business, you'll have key performance indicators for all of it. And it's just a matter of thinking what are the key performance indicators for this thing in my business? What do I need to know about this in order to make sure that it is running efficiently or being created efficiently or whatnot? So you might have key performance indicators for customer service. So if you get a ton of customer service inquiries, then you have like a staff of three people that handle it. Then you want to know things like, how long is it taking to answer each person and how what percentage of those inquiries are being handled on the first connection connection point so that first interaction what percentage of the customer service person's time is spent actually answering the customer versus documenting information for that customer versus idle time lots of information that you can track and you should track probably a lot of information but then making decisions based on a few key areas when you're trying to make decisions uh you know based on data looking at too much data can really hinder your ability to make a decision unless you really know how everything co is connected you're really just wanting to look at, some, uh, you know, three to five really good metrics that will indicate where the project is or the success of the project or or whatnot so that you can make decisions based off of that information. When you're selling a course or doing a launch, you want to know the conversion rate of your sales page, but you want to know the conversion rate at each individual point of sale. A lot of people just look at conversion rate overall. And that is an interesting metric to look at. But for instance, if you're expecting to have, say, a 10% conversion overall, and you have a 4% conversion overall, you need to know where are you losing people along the way? So is it that you're sending emails and people aren't clicking over to the sales page? In that case, you need to look at your emails. Or is it people are looking at the sales page, but they're not clicking to the, to the checkout, in which case, there's something on the sales page you probably need to look at, or it could be a combination. Like there could be a, a disconnect between what you've said in the email versus what they're seeing, seeing on the sales page. So that's another thing to look at. Are they going to the sales page? They're clicking to the checkout, but then they're not actually completing the checkout, in which case there could be a disconnect between the sales page and what they see at the checkout, or there could be something on the checkout that's not working properly or something on the checkout that's just like putting them off. And then once you have all of those different conversion rates, you can then see, all right, so this is where I need to fix this issue. So it's like one of the few times where you're probably going to have more than one technically key performance indicator. Really the key performance indicator is the, what's your conversion rate from email to to actual sale. That's your key performance indicator. But then within that, the things that are going to be informing that is your conversion rates for all those other points. So hopefully that makes sense. Because usually I typically say you're only really going to be looking at, you know, three to five uh, metrics for anything. Um, but when you're talking about sales and your sales have multiple kind of like points where somebody has to say yes to it, you kind of have to look at every single point in order to really figure out what's affecting your overall um, KPI. But yeah, so just in regards to KPIs in general, what KPIs you track 
is going to be uh, really dependent on what you're trying to accomplish and what you're doing in your business. And this is something that we go into in depth in Scale Society, which is my uh, group program designed to help move business owners from that owner operator overwhelmed, doing it all themselves kind of role into the role of CEO where they are well supported and have the foundations in place that can help them scale their business more smoothly and more successfully. So if you're interested in Scale Society at all, make sure to get on the notify list by going to anyoldtask.ca slash scale. And beyond that, if you heard anything in this uh, video that you thought oh, so-and-so really needs to hear this, don't forget to share it with them. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and together we thrive. Talk to you later.